Hey everyone, my name is Rick, otherwise known as Mirai, elsewhere on the internet. And in this video, I'm going to be showing everyone how to leak test a water cooling loop. Now, I'm sure there's plenty of people that are scratching their heads. They're going, uh, dude, uh, we know how to leak test a water cooling loop. You put fluid in it, you put paper towels everywhere, you turn the pumps on, and you let it just circulate for X amount of time until you're comfortable with the result and you don't see any drips, any leaks anywhere. Right? But how long do you wait? One hour? Two hours? Eight hours? Twelve hours? Twenty-four hours? Or more? Some people are going to say, dude, if I don't see a leak in two hours, we're good. Turn the power on. We're, we're, we're golden. Some people are going to say, nope, twelve hours minimum. Other people are going to say, I wait twenty-four. Personally, I have had a leak in a system eight hours into leak testing. What do you do at that point? You've got things full of water. It's full of the fluid you're using. Do you try to tighten it down? What if it's tight already? You know, what if it just continues to drip? Now you've got to empty the system. You've got to mess with, you know, you have to dispose of all that water and you're going to have to refill it again with not everyone uses just distilled water. Some people use the concentrate premix. So something like Mayhem's X1 is $18 for a 250 milliliter bottle here in the US. It's $18 plus shipping plus tax. If you live in a state that's taxable, wherever you're buying from. This particular system takes about a gallon of water. That's almost 4,000 milliliters of water. That's four. That would take four of the X1 little clear concentrated things at $18 a piece, $72 before shipping to fill this thing up. If I have a leak on that, this is not fun to drain. This is not exciting to drain this system. And then I have to spend another $72 and wait for it to get shipped to me and then refill it once I think I've fixed the leak, right? All of that is a bunch of bullshit. I did this leak testing. I did this, put the water in, put the paper towels down, run the water through the system. God, <laughs> there has to be a better way. So I'm trying to find what other people are doing, right? I stumble upon threads and what it comes down to is you can pump air into your system and you can read the pressure, the PSI in the system. And if there's any leaks, well, the reading is going to change. If there's no leaks and you pump a you know, certain amount of PSI into the system, well, then there's no leaks. You're golden. You're good. So that's what I'm doing here. Now there's information out there. This is what I'm about to show is not new and revolutionary. There's plenty of this information out there, but it's so scattered. Nothing is really focused directly on just how to make a real simple setup. You look at these people's threads and they have either something super custom. Uh, they have something super jerry rigged. <laughs> Some of these that are more simpler, they're linking to Home Depot and Lowe's and other hardware sites and whatnot, but the thread is four years old. So the links are dead. There's not a lot of information out there about this. There's some videos on YouTube as well that kind of vaguely touch on putting air into the system and whatnot. And Aqua Computer, to be fair, Aqua Computer also has something that they sell called Dr. Drop. I have a Dr. Drop. It's actually broken. It's been broken since day one. Uh, other people have reported that. This isn't a Dr. Drop review, clearly, but they do make that. I'm just throwing that out there if you want to try that out. It didn't work for me, so I had to journey into my own creation, which is what we've got here. So I'll give some close-ups of this right here. We've got a Schrader valve. This is, uh, if this looks familiar, it is the same valve that's found on the tires of your vehicle, the tires of your motorcycle, the tires of your bicycle. It's the exact same valve. It's proven technology. This, this technology is over a century old at this point, and it works, so we still use it. This is a Schrader valve. The other thing we've got here is a pressure gauge. This you know, Schrader valve is probably $2, $2.50. Uh, this um, pressure gauge is probably $5 to $7, something like that. Maybe even cheaper, depending on where you're at. I'm not sure. This probably was $5 from Amazon. The extensions that these are attached to, these are bits power extenders. If you're going to look for bits power extension, you may not find exactly this piece. It is an extender specifically. That is what it's called. Uh, one thing I want to point out about the pressure gauge is that mine only goes up to 30. And you want something that doesn't go up very high. Don't get a gauge that goes up to 100, 200, 300 PSI. You don't want that. We're only going to be pumping 10 to 12 PSI into the system. If you've got 100 tick marks or hash marks and you're trying to read exactly if you're at 10 or 11 or what, you know, what are you at? And then you walk away and you come back later. Did the needle move? You're not sure because you can't really tell where you're at. You get something with that measured a little less PSI, you get a better reading. You can see the tick marks, the hash marks. You can see exactly where the needle's sitting and if it moved or not. So that's what's important about the PSI gauge. I'll probably mention that again later. Now, You'll notice that there's some shininess around these threads, <clears throat> and that's because they're epoxied in place. Now, this is where my frustration arose at this point. 
Here's a little lesson. We're going to set these down for a minute. Here's a little lesson. If there's one thing that's universal about water cooling for computers, PC water cooling, it's that the thread that is used, it's known or it's, it's referred to as a G and one quarter inch thread. When you're out in the real world and you're shopping for Schrader valves and pressure gauges, it's highly unlikely you're going to be able to find them where it says G and one quarter inch thread. When you're out in the real world and you're looking for this type of hardware, you're going to find NPT thread and you're going to find BSP thread. NPT stands for National Pipe Thread. It's what's used in America and only America. BSP is British Standard Pipe and it's used in the rest of the world. G and a quarter inch thread for PC water cooling is BSP thread. You're going to want to find a Schrader valve and a pressure gauge with a BSP thread. But living in the United States, I was having a difficult time doing that. Even on the hardware sites that had BSP fittings, I could not find. And I know someone's going to link in the bottom and the disk in the, in the comments somewhere. This is exactly where you get this stuff. And that's fine. But this is where my frustration arose because I'm on Amazon. I'm on other hardware sites. I forget the names exact at this point. It's been a few months. But uh, I'm trying to like concoct someone. I'm, try I'm trying to make a Frankenstein fitting out of this where I can get a conversion because there's little conversion fittings that will convert quarter inch NPT to quarter inch BSP, female to male, this and that. And you're trying to find the rest of the, it's a big giant puzzle and it's just frustrating. And you're not even sure if it's going to work at that point, right? So what I did was I just said, you know, fuck it. We're just going to put this thread in there and we're just going to epoxy it in place. It's a pretty permanent solution. And I'll tell you what, it works perfectly fine. So, and you can test anything. It doesn't matter whether you're testing a system. What if you take apart a block? You take apart that CPU block, you take apart that GPU block to clean it, and you put it back together. How do you leak test it? You just run water through it for hours at a time, seeing if there's a leak? Again, it's kind of a waste of time. It's kind of a waste of time. You put these in there, you pump some air into it, and you figure out if there's a leak in literally 10 seconds, because it won't hold air if there's a leak. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to show how this works. I have already tested this system. We do have another camera here. So you guys can get a close-up of the, this particular pressure gauge here. Again, I have just, as my Schrader valve rolls away, OK. I have tested this already. I know that this is good to go, but we'll just demonstrate exactly what happens here. So you got a good view of that in that camera. And then we will thread this in. Again, this can go in any inlet, any outlet. This just so happens to be my particular setup. These are my fill ports on this particular loop. So this is just where I do this. This is a, just a little handheld uh, air pump. Nothing special. This may have been the most expensive thing out of all of this to buy. Uh, or maybe not. The Bits Power extensions, extenders, they're pretty expensive. So they were probably the most expensive. But um, I don't know, 10 bucks for the for the hand pump, $15 maybe. This is something you're going to be reusing time and time again. So we just attach it to there and then we just start pumping. Now, depending on how much you have to pump is obviously how much space is in your system. So this system in particular has uh, 270 milliliter reservoirs, two 360 millimeter um, radiators, a standard amount of tubing, I would say, GPU block, CPU block, and that's it. So I like to pump about 11 PSI, and I can't really see the camera, so I'll have to, uh, OK. Am I blocking the camera with my head? I hope not. So somewhere right around there. And then we just attach this. If there was a leak, it, it's unlikely that I would have even gotten up that high. If there was a leak, because earlier when I did this the first time to test this, I forgot to tighten down one of the plugs on the GPU block right away. I got up to about 6 PSI, and it started to fall. It fell down to about 4 PSI. So when you have a leak, it's going to show itself immediately. I'm sorry, I moved that. <clears throat> and there you go. If you've got a cheapo gauge, you might want to give it a few taps to see if the needle wants to settle. Sometimes the needle will move a little bit if you tap it. Not a big deal. Other things to check for, uh, if you have rotary fittings, I happen to have a lot of rotary fittings most of the time. They can be kind of, uh, they can be not sealed sometimes. So you may want to just shake some of the rotary fittings to see if air is going to leak out of those. 
Uh, nothing should change here on mine. Everything should be good. And it does seem good. Um, so that's it. This system is, this system is ready to go. <laughs> I don't have to wait two, eight, 12, 24 hours, 36 hours or more. This is good. I'm good. If you're paranoid, let us sit here for an hour. And again, you may get some settling. So you didn't, um, I'm sorry I keep moving this. I'm trying to get it there. You may get, when you first pump air into your system, you're going to hear in your radiators, you're probably going to hear some crinkling, some crinkling noise. It's going to sound kind of funny. I was worried at first. I was uh, worried that I was doing something bad to the radiators. It's not anything bad to the radiators. It's just the air pushing in there and just filling it out. That's it. It doesn't make that noise anymore because I've pumped air into these radiators several times now. Um, all of this stuff, all of this stuff is pressure tested at a much higher PSI than 12 um, before it gets sent out to be sold. So you don't have to worry about anything like that. If there's a temperature change, if for some reason you're saying, I'm going to leave this for eight hours, I don't trust this. If there's a temperature change in the room, you may get a, a, a drop, a change in PSI. That's something to keep in mind. Other tips that I might give, in addition to um, not using 50 millimeter extenders <laughs> because of clearance issues, I would, of course, move these down to something like 20 millimeter extenders just so I could fit them in more places. The other thing that I've found certain configurations where I've screwed in the, I've threaded in the pressure gauge and where the thread stops, the pressure gauge is, is facing away from me. Like it's, you know, if I was to screw it into, say, the top of the reservoir here, it would be facing away from me and facing at the motherboard, and I would not be able to see what, where the needle was. I would not be able to see the reading. So one other thing I would do whenever I remake these is I'm going to put rotary fittings on these to begin with. Uh, because sometimes, so for example, you know, this may be facing down. It may just be kind of annoying to look at. In this case, we do have the, op we do have the option to keep spinning it because this is a rotary valve. So... That's something to keep in mind. All these parts are going to be linked, not directly linked, but they will be listed in the description. Again, just bits, power extenders, Schrader valve, pressure gauge, epoxy. That's it. And a, and a handheld uh, um, air pump. That's it. Nothing fancy. Nothing too fancy. Very simple. Nothing super custom. Nothing you need drills for or hand saws or sawzalls or anything like that. You don't need any power tools. You need some epoxy and just thread it in there. Paint the inside of the threads on the extender. Paint the outside of the threads on the piece of hardware, the pressure gauge and the Schrader valve. Put them in there. They get about two turns. I got about two turns. That's it. Not a lot. And I just set it down and just let it sit overnight just so that epoxy would be 100% solid the next day so I could start doing pressure testing. And this is, this is a fantastic setup. So hopefully this helps someone. Hopefully this information is now concentrated in one area and you can share this with other people. So that's it. Again, my name is Rick, otherwise known as Mirai. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.